coming up here and just saying amen. <laughs> because you know something, when you're worshiping and you're listening to the song, I mean, it just everything about it was just amazing. Just it took you into another place, yeah, into like the Jesus place, you know, yeah. where you can only thank and praise God. So thank you very much. I was bored. It was beautiful. Yeah. Everything about it, I love it. We're gonna do that every week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I tease because I think you know we we have so many folks that are doing our, our praise and worship now, which is a blessing. I said there's gonna be more of them than us. <laughs> <laughs> See, like five people sitting here, like 45 people. Over here. <laughs> you know, but God is good. But we're gonna open it up today because we want to talk about uh, when the problem is you. When the problem is you. And uh, we're going to go through uh, Philippians chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 5 through 11. If you have your Bibles, you can open it up with me. If you don't, just listen up. Philippians 2, verses 5 through 11. And it reads, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. May the Lord bless the ears and the readers of his word. You know, we want to talk about when the problem is you. And you know, to be honest with you, nobody wants to hear that the problem is them. I'll be honest with you. I mean, we've, we've ministered with couples, we've shared with couples, and, you know, typically after, like, the first 30 seconds, we go, okay, you know what? Stop right there. We know exactly what your problem is. They said, you haven't even listened to the whole story. Yeah, yeah. The problem is you. <laughs> you can hear it. It's like the first 5 to 10, 15 seconds. He says, Jesus is nowhere to be found in that whole 30 seconds. And so basically what you're telling us is what you think and not what God thinks. Basically, you're telling us how you should treat your husband, but not how God said you should treat your husband. You're telling us your thoughts about how your wife needs to submit to you, but yet and still, you're really not going from God's perspective. It's more of a commandment. And that's not what God said. And so when we think about when the problem is you, we want to look at how is it that the problem is you. And no matter what your situation is, no matter how mad you are, you have to stop and think, did I stop and pray and ask God for direction? Did I stop and pray and ask God for wisdom on how to deal with this situation? Did I stop and ask my wife or my husband to pray with me before I let her have it or before I let him have it? Did we even bring God into the mix? Did we ask the Holy Spirit for anything? So oftentimes, we're quick to point that finger. Bam. I can tell you right now what I can tell you. Well, I can tell you too. It's you. If you don't take the time to stop and pause and ask the Holy Spirit to come and reveal, you pray and ask God, hey, we need you right now. It's an urgency. There's a sense of urgency right here. My wife and I, we're about to get into it. And you need to ask your wife, even if she said, you know, I don't feel like praying with you right now, then you need to go in your quiet time and you need to go pray for your wife in that situation before you make a judgment. When the problem is you, you have to, have to, have to, have to put your ego and your pride aside. You have to. It's mandatory. It's not voluntary. It's mandatory. You are getting ready to place judgment on your wife. You're getting ready to place judgment on your husband. 
It's something that they'll forgive you, but they'll never forget what you said. So why would you go that route? You have to have that discipline, and that's where prayer and fasting comes in, because you have to pray for that discipline. You know, before I go off, before I do something, Father God, oh, please touch me. Please, let your Holy Spirit rain down on me. Shut me down. Do something. Put me in my place. Stop me. Pause me before I hurt my spouse and say something that I regret later. Because the problem is you. The problem is you. No matter where you come from, no matter what your life was before you got here, you have the opportunity to transform yourself. In Romans 12, 2, it makes it quite clear. Paul made it quite clear to the Romans. You have the opportunity today to make a change. You have the opportunity. And praise God that he gave us his son, Jesus Christ, that died on the cross for our sins, where we're able every single day to renew. Amen. Every day. Because he's forgiving us time after time after time. And when you really think back on all the times he's forgiven you, man, you have a debt of gratitude to Jesus. Yes. Amen. We, we all do. And I'm not going to stand up here like, like I've never had any problems. Oh my gosh, I'm so guilty. I have a, I just let me rewind my life with my spouse of 17 years. And I can let you know it was me. I was a problem. I was a problem. And it took a while for me to understand. But I had to pray and pray and pray and pray and ask God to reveal to me. And he said, yes, sister, I know what the problem is. It's you. And I was broken. I was heartbroken. But I was broken. Because here it is my job to uplift and love my husband. And I was pushing him down. The farther I can get him down, the better. I'm chasing dollars. He's chasing obedience. Those two don't work, guys. They don't. So I'm not going to stand up here and preach and, you know, minister to you guys if it didn't already happen in my life. I've been there, done that for years. And it doesn't work. But now, trust me, through a lot of prayer and a lot of fasting, and my knees are all worn out. <laughs> I said, please, Father God, stop me. Put me in a pause. Have me go into another room. Give me that cool out and let me go somewhere and cool off before I say something to my spouse that I will regret. And guess what? The Holy Spirit does it each and every time. So I can tell you just as a testimony that it definitely works. And you say, how does that happen? The phone will ring. The doorbell will ring. My cell phone will ring. You know, my husband will sneeze and need to go get a tissue. I mean, I don't care. There's been so many situations where, put that pause right there. It's like, wait, stop right now. Stop right now. Stop it right now. Have a seat. Take a pause. Have a seat. It can happen to you too. So before you point the finger and blame someone else, even though it seems obvious that perhaps it is your spouse's fault, you have to take a moment and take that finger and go like this and say, Father God, is it me? Could, could it be me, even though it may seem obvious? Could it be something I say? Could it be my behavior, my body language, my tone? Could it be me? Could it? And then you pray with your spouse. And your prayer is not, Father God, let this person know that she's wrong. <laughs> no. You let your spouse know how much you love them. You do. And you say, Father God, thank you for this gift, this precious gift that you blessed me with. Thank you, Father God, that I have someone that I can love and cherish and spend each and every day with. Thank you that you blessed me with my spouse, someone that I can love. And although we're having a, in a period of conflict, we know and we believe and we trust that you can reveal to us what we need to do. You can give us the wisdom and the knowledge and the direction as far as what we need to do step by step. We trust and we have faith in you that this will happen. And when you do that and you're holding hands with your spouse, you give them a hug and a kiss, and you say, babe, if you need to cool off, I understand. But let's regroup tonight before we go to bed. We're going to pray again. And the next morning you get up, and we're going to pray again. 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 And you keep that pattern of prayer, and you will have a strong marriage.
God will open up the doors of communication. He will shut down jealousy, pride, ego. Your form of commitment will be stronger. Your love will be deeper. There's nobody. I'm telling you, don't talk about my husband because you're going to see me go, what, 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 what? We're <laughs> uh, not playing anymore. And neither should you. Amen. So today, we're going to talk about when God reveals that you are the problem. What actions do you take to make immediate change? Immediate. Immediate change. Because he reveals to you now what? And we have a period of, of everything I think that we do in our, our ministry is our now what? Okay, now we've gotten this far, now what? Now what? So what are you going to do? Now what? When God reveals to you that you're the problem, what actions do you take to make immediate change? Amen? Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> 